Hi, I'm Shandra Prophet. And I'm Jeremiah Prophet. And we're here in Gunnison, Colorado at the Gunnison Car Club Car Show. That's right, and we brought 12 Land Cruisers here for everybody to check out, and one of them is a brand new completed restoration, so we're gonna feature that at the end of this episode, so stay tuned. <laughs> So we actually brought almost one of each kind of engine conversion we offer to the car show today. And we decided, because it's so hard for some people to make up their mind whether they want a diesel or a gas engine, that we would let the crowd vote here. And so let's go over and see what they like. Let's start with this one right here. Okay, so this is what we have. We are letting people vote for gas or diesel by taking a washer out of this bin and putting it in the bin of their choice. So right over here, we're gonna feature this vehicle in the episode today, so you'll see more about it later. But this is a gasoline engine conversion, 5.3 liter Vortec, and a 4L65E automatic, so gas, automatic. And let's see, we've got, voting is early, but I don't know, looks like maybe 15 washers in there for this gas, and let's see its competition. This FJ60 is a Cummins R2.8 and a five-speed transmission, uh, so obviously a diesel. Um, let's see what we get for votes for it. Oh, I gotta tell you, it looks like, looks like the diesel, at least in this situation, is winning. So gas automatic versus diesel five-speed, diesel's winning, and we have two more to vote for right over here. Let's look at them. So once again, two more vehicles to choose from right here with their own bins. We've got an LS3 Corvette, 6.2 liter E-Rod with a five-speed Toyota transmission behind it, and it's getting some votes. It looks like about the same as the other gas engine, actually, 10 or 15 so far and its competition, the Cummins R2.8, but this time with an eight-speed auto, this is the 8HP80. So gas five-speed, diesel automatic. Which one of these is winning? Oh, once again, it looks like the diesel has more votes, but we're gonna check back all day. Uh, the car show just started. People haven't even really had a chance to come back here yet, so they'll be voting and we'll see. Now, the reason we're doing this is just for fun, but also, I honestly do talk to a lot of people about which engine conversion is best, and I actually talk to a lot of people about not doing an engine conversion at all. So, purists, just so you know, I'm on your side. But the truth is, Adding practicality is something a lot of people want to do, so we do a lot of gas engine conversions, we do a lot of diesel engine conversions, and this is how we're gonna find out what people like better. What's your vehicle, Bob, and tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so it's a 1985 Toyota pickup, extended cab, SR5, um, 033 white, Paint, original SR5 stripes, uh, fuel injected engine, pretty much stock except for a two and a half inch lift. So what Bob didn't say is that he's a punk kid. Everybody knows that only punk kids build Toyota pickups, right? But what's interesting about that is here at the show, he's been talking to a lot of people about it. They're all old men. Seems like, look, look. So maybe, I'm wrong, maybe punk kids don't build Toyota pickups, maybe it's all old men? You guys tell me. Well, I've got a couple favorites. One of the most recent favorites that we just finished putting together is this green FJ62. I like to call it a Boston green, even though that's not the color code. That's just the one it reminds me the most of. Mostly because I'm a big fan of the square headlights of the FJ62s. I'm a big LS3 guy because these vehicles, when they put down quite a bit of power, is quite nice. But at the same time, I'm kind of torn between this one over here, as well as another LS3 powered vehicle, which is more on the very aggressively modified section. So, you know, we've got a fully linked, fully custom one that this was our C2019 build. I've, been, I've actually spent a lot of time driving this one, so I've come to like it quite a bit, you know, it's full, fully custom interior. I quite like the Roadrunner decal, even though that seems to be an unpopular opinion. It drives really well, it pulls pretty hard, and I mean, Jeremiah's wheeled the snot out of it before, so that's always fun, but yeah, it's a toss-up between the two. I guess I like the color green as well. <laughs> All right, this is my favorite. I've always loved this color ever since I started working on Toyotas. And 
It's just the color. I love it. <laughs> and it's quite fun to drive. Would you like it better if it was a gas engine? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is uh, my personal 1976 Toyota FJ40. Um, this is my own personal project that I've been tinkering with for about the past three years. Um, my Probably the most favorite part of it right now is currently the drivetrain that I have in it. It's a twin turbo V6 out of a 2016 Cadillac ATS-V with an 8-speed auto behind it, which I believe is one of the first in an FJ40, especially this engine. And uh, it's been a really awesome swap to do. As you can see, it fits uh, very well into an FJ40 bay, but uh, it's been a really awesome driver and it's great off-road. Well, I like all of them, but I have, I'm especially partial to the Mega Cruiser. This is my baby Mega Cruiser. And I take it everywhere. I take all the kids. We can take all the employees. It goes anywhere through snow and dirt and grime and rocks, and it's amazing. I love it. It's my favorite, hands down. We finished this FJ62 just in time for the Gunnison Car Show. Right after this, it's headed to Overland Expo Mountain West, so we wanted to take this opportunity to feature here. Let's talk about what we got under the hood. Here at Resurrection Land Cruisers, we offer two different gasoline engine conversions. This particular one is a 5.3 liter Chevy Vortec, and we've got it mated to a 4L65E transmission. This, being an FJ62, has vacuum actuated four wheel drive in the stock transfer case. One of the things I like about this conversion is that we can use the FJ62 factory transmission shifter. This FJ62 was originally gray with a gray interior. But to complement the exterior green, we decided to change the interior to brown. The dashboard and all plastics were repainted, and the seats were recovered in medium brown leather. Underneath all of that, we've got a new brown carpet kit and Dynamat. There are a couple of things that set an FJ62 apart from the FJ60. The first is the ability to mount a doubled in stereo, in this case, a Sony with Apple CarPlay. FJ62s also had power windows and door locks and power mirror. One other minor difference is that FJ62s added a pull cable for the gas tank door. Lastly, we added our custom Tuffy box with wireless charging. This FJ62 got new three-point retractable seat belts, including a set for the rear passengers. I mentioned this Land Cruiser used to be gray, but we finished it in the customer selected beautiful deep green. So Shandra covered that pretty nicely. I wanted to talk a little bit about the style of the 60s and 62s we've been doing lately. We're doing these resto mods, right? Uh, diesel engines, gas engines, different drivetrains, but really keeping a lot of the authentic outside look. I mean, some would call this a sleeper. What I mean by that is mild lift, factory bumpers, uh, not too much um, off-road looking accessories, right? And if you'll notice, every 60 we brought here is like that. So just kind of a little bit of a difference I'm noticing from um, you know, all of the overland looking built things that we were doing a couple of years ago. Anyway, this one, I say the accessories, does have the easy on canine roof rack, uh, PRLC rock sliders on the sides, almost a mandatory combo because if you have the roof rack, the sliders make it easy to get up there. But other than that, pretty stealthy look. All right, so we're gonna see how our diesel versus gas thing is going. So this Land Cruiser right here, Cummins R2.8, HP8, eight speed automatic. It's got that many washers. I'm not exactly sure how many that is. We'll have to count them up. That's quite a few, quite a few for the diesel in this competition of the two white ones. Here we go with the LS3 five speed. Of course, that's gas. Boy, that looks like fewer washers. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's fewer washers. Now we are in Western Colorado. Pretty much this is a diesel part of the country. The diesel's gonna be more popular here. If we were in California, that diesel wouldn't even be legal, right? So this would probably have more votes. Let's go see if the trend continues over here. Okay, here we have the Cummins R2.8 diesel with a five-speed manual transmission. Not as many votes as over there, I don't think, but let's see how that compares to the gas. This gas uh, LS 5.3 liter Vortec, um, oh, definitely fewer, definitely fewer. So boy, I gotta tell you, it just looks like diesels are winning in Western Colorado. But please vote on this episode, which conversion you like better. And feel free to throw in there, oh, you're ruining the Land Cruisers because you're putting these other engines in them. I get it, it's not for everybody. But remember, most of our rigs are, or at least retain some sort of Toyota engine. So it's kind of an anomaly that there's all engine swaps here but anyway let us know which one you like better in the episode vote below diesel or gas 
And actually, while we're here, we'll do a little plug for this rig. So this is a restoration from a few years ago. Went to its owner. He was using it actually pretty hard in Tennessee, uh, but it turns out it's not really the right rig for him. Um, he drives a ton, so he needed something quite a bit newer um, and like quieter, right? Because he's going back and forth maybe five, 10 hours a week every every day on uh, some crazy commute. So anyway, this rig's gonna hit the website for sale pretty quick. Cummins eight speed, uh, stage two restoration leather, nice truck. You'll see it on the website, but now you can see it early. Check it out. Thanks again for watching this episode of Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. That's right. If you haven't seen all of our episodes, please watch them. I think this is going to be like number 78 or 79, so there's a lot of Land Cruiser content. And if you don't get tired of us by then, on Instagram, we're Pro Cruiser. On Bring a Trailer, we're Pro Cruiser. Facebook is Resurrection Land Cruisers, and we are ResurrectionLandCruisers.com on the World Wide Web. Thanks for watching. This is like the bomb pop. You remember bomb pops? Oh. Right? This is like the bomb pop seltzer. In fact, that's a good idea. They should make bomb pops. I remember bomb pops when I was a kid at the country club because at the swimming pool they had bomb pops and it was like the best thing. Do you remember those? I don't. Or are you too young? Horrible. That's, I don't know why anybody drinks that crap. I'm telling you, this tastes like salt water with bubbles in it, and they all taste exactly the same, whether it's Kroger or La Croix or however you say it. <laughs> right? They're horrible. If you're drinking these things, it's like salmon. Salmon's not good, and this stuff's not good, and don't pretend that it is because it's not. Like, you, have to, you have to have the salmon. The salmon's wonderful. You should try that with a nice seltzer water. It's like, Bleh. Nobody likes that stuff.